Good? Cool. If everybody's ready, I'll start the time. Now, we have from with one observation, Curious 17 to OMFIF explains that reason to drive in Catalonia is not spontaneous, but rather the product of a buildup of tensions without independence and unilateral secession is inevitable for three key reasons. The first is structural deficits. Major of the GK in 2017 writes that because large states are inherently difficult to govern, the globalized world is moving towards them splintering. Second is media madness. Trevenia 17 of the University of Barcelona explains that the main driver of succession has been the Catalan media's 30 year narrative that has discouraged compromise and pro promoted hostility against Spain. Third is generational change. Gonzalo 17 of foreign policy finds the support for unity is weakest among younger populations. Overall, near 17 in Memoir, you writes that self-determination is unstoppable and no power can definitely prevent any group from eventually gaining independence and just for these reasons that Battle Force 17 of foreign policy warns that no form of mediation in the status quo will bridge the divide between Catalonia and Spain. Contention 1 is preventing Spanish retaliation. Castles 13 at University of Barcelona explains that the method, method of independence is vital as outcomes differ on independence as the result of civilized bilateral discussions. Compared one is secession is traumatic. Trauma does not equate to violence but rather lacks dialogue as one side refuses to sit down at the talks while the other continues to make demands. Castles explained that this, this is the current situation in Spain with the chance of a non-traumatic outcome becoming less likely over time, an affirmative ballot creates a unique departure from the past decade's Spanish policy in favor of a more amic amicable agreement, the impacts of preventing conflict. In the status quo, Plano 17 MIT concludes that political dynamics of kind of letting stand up signal a civil war which could kill over 100,000 people, even worse, William 16 American University concludes that these conflicts destabilize the entire region, creating refugee crises, war economies, and terror safe havens. Even if conflict could be avoided right now, Gary 17, the Oriental Review writes that Catalonia is a frozen conflict, a phenomenon which Williams explains is a result of a deep cultural difference that persists for centuries despite numerous attempts at reform. Frozen conflicts are detrimental, as Paul Tennant Newsweek explains that frozen conflicts drag on through cycles of stalemates and ceasefires, preventing any political victories from translating to stability. This is because Tiro 6 at UC Boulder explains while agreements may signal short term peace down the line, the preference of one or both parties are likely to change to the point where agreements can be ripped up at a moment's notice, causing conflict to reignite. Fortunately, Tiro concludes that peacefully agreed upon borders are rarely fought, fought over. Contention 2 is Sailing to victory. Calvin 15 explains that part of the U.S. should just stop trying to sea life. The presence of the naval sea life command of force on its own, amounting the fourth largest navy in the world. He further up to facilitate this ship. NATO members must expand their logistical capabilities, or else the sea life command will never be fully shifted, leaving the South China Sea open for Chinese exploitation. Fortunately, Catalonian ports will solve the issue per Calvo as the reports of Barcelona and Tarragona will be per perfect in conjunction with NATO forces in achieving this logistical feat. All that we need to change for connecting infrastructure to be built for these ports, and they could finally fulfill their role in securing the logistical security of the Mediterranean, something so important he states that this shift entirely rests upon it. Unfortunately, Spain will not utilize these ports for three key reasons. The first is Catalonia, which Calvo finds is preventing Spain from investing in the connecting infrastructure for these ports to be utilized effectively. Second is the threat of a Moroccan invasion, which is Hay 617 of Atlantic Council explains forces Spain to prioritize ground assets over naval ones. Third is the infrastructure gap. Catalonia's in 2014 reports that Spain has reduced investment in Catalonia connecting infrastructure by 50%. Catalonia inversely would utilize these ports for two reasons. First is trade. Pedroza 17, a Catalonia official, stated that Catalonia wants to expand its ports to enhance trade. Second is political motivation. Fortunately, SNL 17 of the University of London finds that Spain disproportionately pulls money out of Catalan infrastructure spending, directly damaging the efficacy of these ports. Were Catalonia to be independent, official planning documents indicate money would flow to the current rotting infrastructure for these ports. The impact is global thermonuclear war. Sverdrup 16 writes that any analysis in the South China Sea stability absent this transatlantic shift to the Naval Sea Lift Command is sorely incomplete. He adds that there is practically no problem of this magnitude that can be solved as effectively as this one with a full U.S. NATO cooperative shift. Eric, er, Erickson 13 writes the United States cannot risk a strategic shift in the status quo because if they do, they appear weak and malleable to Chinese assertions regionally. He emphasizes that this creates a false perception on the side of China that risks mis miscalculation. Carnac 16 views the U.S. presence in South China Sea as lacking presence that there is a shift away from the U.S. capacity to assert its interests in the region. Garofalo 16 explains that this false perception risks miscalc because as China becomes more assertive, they can misjudge where the U.S. threshold for conflict is and spark an all-out thermonuclear war. Kalaki 16 explains that this is because the PRC does not perceive the situ situation as possibly going nuclear, while the U.S. is still in a Cold War mindset that the conflict is ne inevitably going to go nuclear. Were it to break out, this mismatch is what will create the miscalculated nuclear war for all these reasons affirmed. Division 98, our first contention is about hurting Spain's economy. This happens in two ways. The first is through revenue. Kudosova of CNN Money explains that a fifth of Spanish tax revenue is supported by Catalonia, one of the richest regions in Spain. Much like any progressive tax system, Catalonia sure is crucial to ensuring the stability of the poor and working class via direct government assistance and social programs. Second is through investment. Al Jazeera in 2017 writes that Catalonia is home to the largest station businesses of Spain, with 25% of all goods and services produced there. Because of this, Catalonia is the largest regional jar of foreign direct investment to the country. Overall, Rodrigo Pose of LSE concludes that affirming will cost Spain 20% of its GDP overnight, and this loss of value will collapse exports and consumer confidence, with the poor feeling the lion's share of the impact. Our second contention is about freezing over. 
affirming would lead to the international isolation of Catalonia. As the Shish Kumar of the Atlantic Council in 2017 explains, an independent Catalonia would by definition no longer be part of the EU. It would see barriers go up between it and EU member states overnight. The implication would be no free movement for people with Catalan passports, no free movement of goods and services to and from Catalonia, and a potential loss of access to the euro. Alfonso Valero of the Conservation Furthers. That because joining the EU requires a unanimous yes vote, it is all but certain that even if Catalonia attempted to rejoin, it would face rejection. This is because Vox in 2017 writes an independent Catalonia would set the dangerous precedent for secessionist movements everywhere to challenge EU states. So rejecting Catalonia would be necessary to uphold the structural integrity of the EU and show consequences for future challenges to power. However, even if Catalonia were to bypass these hurdles somehow, the BBC reports that historically the process of EU integration would take a minimum of 10 years, and within this decade, Catalonia will be left in a state of complete uncertainty, laying the undeniable foundation for a failed economy. Sophia Bosch of CNBC explains that in the event of independence, Catalonia's separation from the EU would guarantee a loss of two-thirds of their exports and 70% of foreign direct investment, leading analysts to project that unemployment would double on impact. Importantly, the loss of access to the European Central Bank and Spanish debt relief would indefinitely delay Catalonia's ability to recover as it could not invest in the creation of important state apparatuses, like a federal banking system and improved infrastructure, locking in economic and political instability. As such, the immediate consequences of affirming a scathing recession felt, felt most directly by people at the bottom. Post concludes that independence translates of a, into a period of, quote, rapid impoverishment from which Catalonia may never recover. Our third and final contention is about international fracturing. Press News in 2017 explains that the Catalan independence movement versus a spillover effect onto neighboring countries as the precedent it sets could be the first step in completely fracturing the already weak EU. Spain officially granting Catalonia independence would break many clearly drawn lines in its constitution with severe implications. Rachel Donadio of The Atlantic reports that following Catalonian independence, secessionist movements in Italy, Belgium, and France may rapidly move to secede, claiming Spain's example as precedent. Already, Al Jazeera reports in 2017 that Catalonia's fight for independence has intensified conflict in other regions of Spain. The best example of this is with the current Basque movement. Holly Elliott of CNBC in 2017 writes, the Basque country also claims its status as an autonomous community and is closely eyeing the situation unfold in Catalonia. The situation is uniquely unstable because of the region's history with violent separatism and terrorist attacks carried out by nationalist groups. And the top spokesman for the Basque Nationalist Party has recently, has recently made moves to indicate a resurgence of an independence movement based on the likes of Catalonia. The impact is snowballing instability. Stern Sec of Vox EU writes in a comprehensive analysis that any secessionist movement of a small state from a larger one inspired out of conflict is likely to collapse these far states' economy. And even in the absence of this full secession, Bloomberg writes that the political turmoil and conflict across multiple areas of Spain and beyond could spell the downfall of the euro and its accompanying markets. And for these reasons, Mission Santos indicates. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Can I have the first question? Sure. So like on international fracturing, is your impact like the fact that these movements separate from their countries or the unrest that it creates internally? Both. Okay. So say like when Czechoslovakia broke up in like the middle of, I don't even know when it broke up, but like say when Czechoslovakia broke up. Why are you asking me a question like, if you don't know the premise of your question? What? Why are you asking me your question if you don't know what happened? Yeah, it's just like moving, the, the date doesn't sure. matter is the All point, right. okay? When Czechoslovakia broke up in, in like central Europe, Right? Why did we not see a wave of separatism and unrest across Western Europe? Uh, I don't know about Czechoslovakia, neither do you, but I do know that when Brexit happened, Scotland followed. So can I ask a question? Hang on, your wait, no, 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 like, no, let's just move on. And your okay. contention too, when you talk about how like sailing to victory, right? You say that Spain is blocking Catalonia from doing this economically. So if there's a, so if we win contention too, and there's an economic recession, then we also win the link to instability and the whole thermonuclear war, whatever you say. No, that is Why? not true because these are the two largest ports on the Iberian Peninsula. Yeah. And because of Catalonia's very small size, like when the United States went into the Great Depression, it is going to invest sure. in the infrastructures that drive its economy. When the United States, oh, when the United States economy was facing extremely high, uh, like deflation rates, okay. it decided to finance the agricultural industry because that was the backbone of the U.S. economy. Uh, the backbone of the Catalonian sure. economy are these two ports. And regardless of an economic recession, okay. it is in their best interest to ensure that they are invested in and they create the, uh, so the economic the stimulus in like, key locations. Like how are these ports? Ports used by Catalonia. Uh, we would argue that they're dual use. So, so like, how are they used? What does dual use mean? Like, what uh, are they used to trade with countries yeah. to do what? Uh, so like both, right? So you can park like <coughs> NATO. I said one thing. How can it be both? 
don't know who's saying. But we'll, I'll answer your question. Sure. Sorry. Okay. So NATO NATO can park its ships in the ports, yet it, it can also conduct trade and commerce. Yeah. So if I want my contention to take out the link, because other countries want to trade Catalonia, the port becomes useless. You can take the question. Okay. So moving on to your. Sorry, let me flip my foot over here. Okay. So on your contention two for like fracturing over, right? So like I'll That's just my contention three. or contention three. Um, like. Again, like I'll ask you another question, right? Like in, in like the colla uh, like same when like Kosovo separated from Serbia, yeah. right? Like why did we not see this? Because Kosovo was a genocide, so the EU had pity on them. Okay. So then what about like what about the breakup of the USSR? Right? Like there's just like like yeah. such such yeah. a high the propensity. The breakup of the USSR for... it led to Yugoslavia splitting into seven countries, one of them being Kosovo. So when you talk about three what? reasons why independence is inevitable, your third one about the younger generation. <laughs> what does Gonzalez true. conclude is the reason why younger people want to secede? Uh, like. Sounds like you're gonna answer the question. Unemployment, so if we win our contention too, then that means we control the link to your inevitability, right? It's not true because we give you three separate warrants and I can assure you, yeah, like, you we'll, 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 we'll front line it when you make the response in That's a speech, right? Um, okay. uh, can I see two, no, no, it was Vox. Vox, you just like, let's start the time now. Start with no review. Who in the conflict's inevitable? We win the round because independence is inevitable. All the next disadvantages are non-unique. The only risk of solving back for these harms is cooperation. Let's go to their contention one. The first one is about losing revenue. Recognize that Catalonia represents 20% of Spain's GDP, but represents 18% of the population. This sense a decrease in the expenses to Spain due to a decrease in the population is about proportional to the loss of the overall output. As a result, Pelusia Business Insider in 2017 quantifies that Spain would only lose 2% of their GDP from Catalonia and mitigate it there. Their second one is about losing investment. Espanol of the University of London 2017 finds that independence helps Spain as a whole in order to quell other independence movements to trigger economic development and modernization across other Spanish municipalities. This, directs, uh, this links directly to the FDI argument as a, as a result in increase in economic development, infrastructure, and modernization, it increases FDI in the economy. Balak of uh, Columbia University in 2009 indicates that infrastructure quality is key in determining the factor of foreign uh, direct investment. Thus, Raymond of the Superior University in 2011 quantifies that a 1% rise in infrastructure enhances FDI flows by 1.31%. On the impact, Spain Visitor Times in 2017 finds that due to an aging workforce the break, uh, uh, that will break national budget, the Spanish economy will implode in the next 20 years. There's two implications. First, their impacts are non-unique, but second, it is try or die for Catalonia. Spain is already done for. Let's go to their second contention on freezing over. First, the EU is grandstanding. McRae of the Independent 2017 finds that the EU's current hardline stance is just a tool to attempt to quell other independence movements. However, Castells of the University of Barcelona in 2016 finds that if Catalonia gained independence, the EU would be forced to accept in order to make sure it has the least possible damage. There are three warnings. The first is a debt disaster. Calvo of the University of Niagara in 2015 finds that Catalonia actually has to help Spain pay their debt, which means the EU will be forced to let them in. Second, Catalonian corridor. Castells observes that a large percentage of the freight enters the EU and pass through Catalonia or to maintain constant flow of trade, the EU would be forced to allow Catalonia to become a member. Third, on NATO access. Calvo from our second contention explains that the Catalonian ports are strategic locations in securing the Mediterranean. Because of this, the NATO members also said the EU would likely want to ensure access to these strategic ports and would push for EU integration to further cooperation with Catalonia. Now for one really big turn. It is try or die for us. Because Benchcourt of the University of Georgetown 2017 finds that using flexibility and determination to centralize and consolidate nations and cultures without regards to regional diversity make it vulnerable to socioeconomic volatility and will cause its inevitable destruction. Varu Fonkis of the University of Athens in 2017 finds that Catalonian independence is a golden opportunity to recharacterize the EU's mission to become more that is more flexible and open to regional diversity. At the end of the day, they tell you that EU is so important, but it inevitably collapses in, our, in their world. When you vote for us, it is try or die as a risk of linking in to their EU benefits, specifically on their Vox evidence and contention too. It's talking about illegal secession, not uh, it's yeah, it's talking about illegal secession, forcing Catalonia not to join the EU. But when you vote for the affirmative, it is more of an amicable agreement. It's solving back for the illegal notions that they talk about. In fact, Gallia and MIT in 2013 explains that because Catalonia is already uh, very well integrated into the EU and meets all the EU's membership standards, they would get de facto membership into the EU, which means we link it to their second contention. Then they, uh, then they say Catalonia have access to credit for infrastructure, one major turn. A new state offers lucrative opportunity in business to investors. An independent Catalonia state would require a substantial amount of goods and investment to build infrastructure and other necessary aspects of the state, creating a new market. Grinnell of the University of Barcelona in 2013 finds that companies would be incentivized to remain and enter Catalonia markets due to increased demand of the state. Let's go to their third contention. It's all about like splitting up. First on Basque, specific, uh, Basque specifically, Basque will ask for independence. Kingsley of New York Times in 2017 finds that after 40 years of violence, the Basques are through with the independence question. Let's look to the time frame analysis. In the short run, Lynch of Holland's University in 2017 finds that the ripple effect cannot happen as no other region in Europe has taken the steps Catalonia has to make independence viable. But in the long run, it's inevitable as a uh, mirror of NYU in 2017 analyzes many different self-determination movements and finds that the power of self-determination is too strong. The fragmentation is inevitable. If anything, turn the argument against them because countries want what they can't have. Immediate landing in 2017 finds that opposing movements 
increase the desire for secession because the perceived cost of being under a national government Wait. is actually increased. Uh, specifically, he finds that nine Catalonian independence increases the risk of secessions brought by other regions. Edward, the University of Texas in 2013 historically finds in the case of Kosovo that if they were denied independence, the aggravation would have actually been uh, greater. Second, Lynch of Holland's University finds that if there is a ripple effect, it will be in the form of autonomy, solving back for the thesis of their case. Uh, let's start. Yeah. Their first word for why independence is inevitable is that at some point globalization is going to cause every single country to splinter. I would argue that yes, globalization is going to cause an increase in cultural diversity and is going to create the tendency for splintering. But by that same logic, because every nation has an interest in staying together, all nations are also going to in inevitably push for compromise. And I would argue is that because this is true, it's also going to guarantee the inevitability of some kind of compromise in the future because Spain has a vested interest in preventing the disfactoring. But the second and most important response here, right, is that if it is inevitable, that means a lot of the debate is going to end up being non-unique. But this this inevitable fracturing could take decades. If you have Spain and Catalonia do it right now, and that leads to a Eurozone economic crisis, that in turn makes sure that it happens a lot sooner. And every single year that it happens sooner is an extra year that 15 million people are at risk of going into poverty when they're all in the Eurozone, and just that poverty, meaning they can't go and get healthcare and they die prematurely, is enough of a reason to vote for us. But then go to the second warning about the media pushing a 30-year narrative. But the problem is that in the last 30 years, except for after 2010, when Catalonia was denied fiscal autonomy, there has never been a single year where there was recorded more than 30% support for independence. Independence has always been a fringe issue in Catalonia, and the only reason it gained majority support was the push of propaganda based off of the 2010 fiscal autonomy bill, which I'm about to prove is going to be solved. But thirdly, they're like, well, the young favor it, so as the like, generational replacement happens, they're going to favor it even more. But the problem is, as the young get older, they become more economically conservative and recognize that it's good to stay in the EU, and then the old people vote no on independence, which is why the distribution of people who support it stays the same again at about 30%. So here's the big problem, right? They are going to argue that it's inevitable, but if a compromise happens over the 20 2010 fiscal autonomy pact, then we would go back to pre-2010 levels of support, which are not enough to generate a secession. And this is happening right now, because according to The Economist, the Spanish government has come around in the aftermath of the December 21st snap election and said that it will compromise on fiscal autonomy, and has created a commission to review the tax autonomy, which is the reason that there was support for independence in the first place. In fact, The Hill reports three days ago that two of the three major pro-independence parties that won the election, comprising 62 of 70 pro-independence seats, actually support a compromise and have redefined independence as more autonomy while being part of the Spanish state. For this reason, not only do we show you A, that according to The Guardian, 74% of Catalan people support a compromise with Spain over independence, whereas only 21% of people support independence, but B, the ING group finds that these political moves indicate a major shift, and for this reason, there is an 85% chance, according to global risk analysis, that the conflict peacefully de-escalates through this compromise and does not resurge. Then go to contention one. They say a peaceful secession is better than a violent one. First, I would argue that a violent one would never happen for two reasons. A, is that according to the New York Times, the Catalan independence movement is unique, and that it has always sold itself as a model for the world, how you can be a peaceful secession and still succeed. In fact, the leaders of the movement have all told their people to not take up arms, which is why they never fired a single shot and they won't. But be it more importantly, foreign policy finds that Spain is a democracy with a democracy score 10 points higher than the US and they would never want to take up arms against their people because if they did, they would be internationally shunned and condemned and people would compare them to Francisco Franco again. It's never going to happen. But one good advantage of not doing a legal secession is that when you vote for them, you're guaranteed independence. When you vote for the NEC, if they illegally secede, it's highly probable that they end up being part of Spain anyways because they already declared independence in October and guess what happens? Spain dissolved their parliament, held another election, and now they don't want it anymore. And they can just keep dissolving their parliament to keep them in the country, so independence is not inevitable. But then go to contention two. All three of their links, why they're not going to use the ports right now, are going to short circuit this argument, right? For example, Spain isn't investing in them right now because they're investing in dealing with the Catalan crisis. So if investor confidence falls even more and the economy gets even worse, they're going to be diverting even more resources away from these ports. Two, on Morocco. Well, the threat of a Moroccan invasion is worse for a region that has no borders and a weak economy. Third, on infrastructure investment, they see Spain doesn't invest a lot, but again, if Catalonia has to first pay back its debt and then talk about infrastructure, and they don't even have a central bank to create a monetary policy, that's going to be a lot worse. Their two warrants don't make a lot of sense either. On trade, well, trade might be beneficial, but joining, like, using this port for, like, checking Chinese aggression doesn't benefit trade. And then second, when they say that they're going to have the political motivation to invest, again, if they have to pay back their debt and deal with diversification concerns, and not a single Catalan elected official or global official has said that Catalonia is going to be the linchpin to dealing with this issue, it's not a big issue. They're just running a really, really low probability high magnitude impact to get out of debating the truth value of this resolution. And if you vote for this kind of team, you create a precedent that people can just run squirrely ass arguments and get away with it. Don't do that and please negate. Oh, yeah. oh.
So just a quick honest question. Are you going to go for some sort of like theory of precedent standing, like setting standard? Or? Theory what? Are you, are you going to go for like the thing that you read at the bottom? About, if like, you guys go standards? all in for this argument, I would be down to do that because I think it's kind of ridiculous yeah. that you guys are going to make this de a debate about like a, like can you name a world leader that has come out saying that that's what these ports are going to be used for in a post accession criteria? Well, so the people, wait, wait, the ports are dual use. The leaders don't have to come out and say it because the ports inherently are dual use. Well, any port can be dual use. No, that's, not, that's actually not true. Most ports are just commercial. These ports specifically are dual use, which is why Calvo finds that wait, Calvo wait, wait, would be very just, well equipped. You just stated that. Yeah. What definitionally makes a port dual use? It could be used for commer like the commercial I, side. I know, but what, what side. fundamentally <laughs> makes it a dual use port? Uh, like the size of the port, I guess the infrastructure, like the railways connecting to the port, like, like the Mediterranean corridor. For instance. Okay, so. Can I have a question? Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me that Catalonia's ports are the only ports that are a certain size to be dual use and that you have a card saying that all other ports are not dual use. Oh, not at all. No. I have evidence that says that Catalonia, A, is in the best geographic location for this to happen, B, they have dual use But do you prove probability that that's what it's going to be used for? Yeah, why wouldn't it be used for that? Wait, that's why I asked you. Do you name any world leader, any Catalan secessionist yeah, leader, so any person so who says yeah, that they're going the to use The Calvo it? evidence is really, really good. And what Calvo is a person. I'm talking about any person in a position of power Wait, who can make the decision Dinesh, that you're calling Dinesh, for. In the real world, like if that's what you want to be talking about, in the real world, Catalonia yeah. is not going to become independent. Right? So obviously world <laughs> leaders are talking about what's going to happen. Whoa, 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 whoa. World <laughs> leaders are talking about what's going to happen no, if they become no, independent. They're, they're not projecting like they're what's talking, happen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They are talking about things like the EU. They no, are talking about no. things so about conflict. Everyone is like almost certain, like in the real world, that that's so not true. The only way they become independent is through fiat. Okay, but you say secession is inevitable, right? So you're yeah, also no, taking no, out that no, argument. No, no. <laughs> I'm saying secession is inevitable in the long run. In the short run, it is not. That is why world leaders aren't talking about ports. It's pretty simple. That's what so how do you have literature on this topic? Like, <laughs> like the EU leaders have all come out talking about the EU. They come out talking yeah. about debt. They come out talking about like every other issue but this crazy China argument that you just decided to break. It's not really like, crazy. Like I would say the ports are like dual use. Like it makes like okay, why? Okay, like, just let's talk about the war and this argument. Let yeah. me ask you a question, right? Yeah. So. Just like, please reasonably articulate to me what like disincentive they have to using it for the NATO side. Okay, the disincentives you talk about in case, we say that they would exist to a larger extent with an independent Catalonia. That's it. They're gonna develop these ports for trade anyways. Yeah, your disincentives in case, right, say that they're spending too much money dealing with the crisis so they can't spend money investing in it. So you have a resolution that doesn't exist anymore. What's the second? We're solution? saying that they're spending money dealing with other problems. Wait, Spain is not Cat Catalonia is independent. Catalonia is spending. Spain and yes, Catalonia I know. Right? And Catalonia is spending money dealing with other problems, so they're not going to pick up the slack for Spain. Does that make sense? It, it, it does. If like you gave me somebody in the Catalan independence movement saying this would be priority number one and not priority number one hundred and one, yeah, how can we fix no, it? Yeah, we other problems we do a like a director of infrastructure from within Catalonia that says the ports will be developed. No, no, he doesn't say they'll be used for NATO. He says we'll yeah, develop. Yeah, but they're dual use, so NATO could use them without any extra like harm. <laughs> okay, but like, you don't prove that's going to happen. It's 10 seconds over. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going like the order of our contentions and like the observation at the top, um, and then their, their case. Uh, front ready? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are all three judges ready? Okay, if everybody's ready, let's start the time. Now, start off from the negotiation overview. This is untrue because radicals have been elected into the Catalan parliament who are incredibly unlikely to start negotiating with the actual Spanish government. Insofar as these radicals do not care about the economic implications of their secession, but rather they are totally devoted to the ideology of seceding, they are likely to continue doing this despite the fact that negotiations are being offered. Then, they say that globalization will create splintering, but that all nations would push for like compromise or something. Like, there is literally no card for this. He's asserting it because it made sense to him during his prep time. But then, uh, that, so you're going to extend the globalization argument which Madrur says that globalization will inevitably lead to splintering. You're going to see their impacts in the long term anyway, but you're going to prefer us because you're going to prevent thermonuclear war in the short term. Then let's move on to their turn on our, on our first impact on preventing conflict. They say that Spain could keep like dissolving parliament over and over and over again in order to prevent secession from actually happening, but he also reads you at the top that they would not like risk their neck internationally to continue like breaking democratic processes. They will not continue dissolving parliament because it's too costly on an international level. But then 
men on our contention too. They say Ambassador Confidence goes down on, like, on our warrants for like Spain not using the ports, but he misses the point. We're telling you that Spain will never use the ports no matter the scenario. That's the infrastructure argument from Catalan News, who said that Spain has decreased infrastructure funding by 50%. He says that there's no central bank, but A, Pedroza tells you that Catalonians won't want to build these because it's economically feasible. It's like their only method of actually growing their economy, so no matter how bad economically it gets, they will continue building it. And then they say that no, no Catalonians want it, but Estenol is citing a Catalan government think tank. They've already been planning this. This is really key, because insofar as they would finish the infrastructure for these ports, we gain the link in which Sverdrov tells you that without this, uh, that the South China Sea is without this transatlantic ship, and it will create miscalculation, something that Garofola tells you that this, it, would, it, would, it would generate like a false perception under China, which would lead to miscalculation. The warrant for this is because China is misgaging the United States as like, like gauge for like how threatening they can actually appear. China doesn't actually think the United States would nuke them, but the United States doesn't think that, uh, the United States thinks that they would, for all these reasons, affirm. Okay, um, can I? Starting with compromise. Actually, sorry, starting on inevitability. Oh, that was good? Yeah. In cross, John concedes that inevitability is not a true argument, don't for it, alone for a fake argument that they made up. But second, he says that because there's no card, don't, uh, don't prefer Demetrius' analysis. This is a reason to drop them. They say prefer cards over logic. I would argue as debaters, we have to debate logic, not just blindly for our faith in some random author that they don't even know about. But also, I would say that Demetrius' logic makes sense, that if they're compromised for this globalization, it's the same argument why compromise is inevitable. But let's win compromise to prove this right. But they just say, oh, radicals have been elected. They ignore the entire premise of our argument that yes, like two radicals are elected, but two of the independence party, which controls the majority, has said that they are no longer for independence, they are pro-compromise, which is why the economy tells that a commission has been set up to solve the root cause of the problems that exist, which is why the ING analysis says there's an 85% chance of full de-escalation, which means that we solve. Not only does it solve this, but it also solves the ports issue, because the compromise is happening on tax autonomy, that means Spain is conceding and going in to give Catalonia money, and that money would be going to use ports, which solves back for their second contention, but more specifically on the second contention, a couple things. One, call for the card. Their port card says that if they benefit from secession, then they can invest inside the ports, which means that our contention too is a prerequisite. They don't, they don't talk about contention 2 and summary. Two of the judges said that they have to extend defense and first, uh, uh, first summary, which means that we automatically win contention 2 and we win this link. The impact is 70% of FDI combined and two thirds of experts. But then the card also doesn't say that NATO would accept them. They just say, why not NATO accept them? Because there's no probability of NATO accepting them. They just say, why not? That's not a fundamental debate issue. More specifically, on our case, a couple of things to the front line. On EU, the, two, the first two things they say is debt disaster and econ benefits. This is wrong for two reasons. The first is that the EU wants to see Catalonia fail because the Williams Voxer that they call for specifically the says is that they want to set the precedent that future sessions movements in France, Belgium, and Italy shouldn't happen. The second reason is that Spain granting Catalonia Independence doesn't uh, doesn't uh, doesn't make this happen because that means that again the independence only sets a bad precedent in their world. But then they say, oh, the NATO has access. But the, fir the, the first thing you have to recognize is that the same war as to why they wouldn't be accepted in the EU is the same war why they wouldn't be accepted into other international organizations such as NATO. But second, if it's a dual use, again they just say why not? The reason why they want it is because again they don't want to show and spread other secession movements inside their own countries. But then they just say, oh, Vox is about an illegal secession. It's not. The Vox warrants is about whether or not it's illegal or illegal or illegal. France and Germany are going to ask in their best interest, and whether or not it's never or not, that means the only risk of sovereignty for further integration into the EU is by voting Connaughton's way, which approaches guarantees a European, uh, European global uh, crisis. Thank you. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Cool. Let's start now. Okay. Do you have the first question? Uh, it's up to you. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll take it, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, on the fact that, like, only two, like, how do you quantify that like 2% of them are radicals? Because we, no, we said, we, I, like I, our- he just said that, like, Sorry, yeah. 62 out of 70 seats are held by the two moderate independence parties, which actually define the term independence not as being a separate state, but as being a, they call it being a nation state, but they've defined it as being part of Spain, but having more autonomy. And the one with eight seats, uh, the CUP actually lost two thirds of the seats that it had from the 2015 election, showing that people are moving away from hardline secession and towards compromise. Wait, but what also happened to the Spanish federal like unitary party? They Does also lost two yeah, so that's, 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 The Unitary Party lost seats, and then the Citizens Party had a meteoric rise and became five times more seats than it's ever had before. And the Citizens Party is the most pro-compromise party that has ever existed in Catalonia. Sounds so, like 
hang on. Like if you combine the citizens' party and you combine the two pro independence party, that's so, like seventy so like, percent so like of the parliament. Basically, pro if it, your your analysis is generally that like if we assume everybody who isn't like directly affiliated with the separatists as like one giant body like for unity, then no, then you're sorry, sorry. that's not that's like, not how it works. No. When you look to the leaders of those organizations and the entire party saying that our stance is negotiations, and when we consider that Catalonia is a parliamentary democracy which forms coalitions on issues that they agree on, it is very probable, given that the Prime Minister of Spain is negotiating, they want to negotiate, and global risk analysis have concluded negotiations would work and de-escalate, that negotiations will happen. Can we talk about your case? Yes. Yeah, sure. you your link card, Estenal, says the reason they would invest is that once they left, because they pay more in taxes to Spain than they get back, that extra money could go into the ports, correct? That is no, 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 no. It's, it's that, it's that the Catalan government and like Catalan government think tanks list this usage of the tax that's, money that they would save as critical, that's, that's, right? That's chill, but the reason it says that this would happen in an independence world With is because they would have that extra tax revenue. We give several other warrants, though. So, like, one of the warrants that we no, give, for instance, else. is that they'd have to develop their, uh, their ports for trade, right? Like, that's, Catalonia is going to have to develop these ports. Fine. Like, I'm, I, I, I even read it in my summary. Like, I, talk, sure. I, I, I yeah, talked about this know. in the first like, class. Like, 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 don't worry, like, we're not pointing, taking issue with that. Like, that's totally fine, right? What we're saying, right, is that they can benefit from trade even if they're part of Spain. So if they get that money back through tax autonomy, autonomy Wait. meaning they can spend their money how they want, Wait, no, no. and the tax autonomy co commission Wait. giving them that extra $16 what? billion dollars back. Yeah, no, so, so, no, wait, so yeah. Spain, Spain controls like how infrastructure is distributed, right? That is that is literally just not true. Wait, it is. Though. All seventeen semi-autonomous no, no, states. No, 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 no like that—that that was actually the card I extended. It said uh, the Catalan news argument said that Spain decreases infrastructure spending on Catalonia by fifty percent. Yeah, that is why they want to secede, and the Tax yes. Autonomy Commission is no, reversing no. that. No, whether or not they can control their taxes doesn't change fundamentally how Spain actually distributes the resources. Okay, and also, right. you can't fiat this right. specific some type of graduation. Can we just see that the card that you gave us before the message on a book, so you can? Yeah, SNL? Yeah. Yeah, SNL. Okay. to gradual little response to the buck analysis that Jack brings up in summary, which says that there are radicals in parliament. That's going to be important because they say that the majority are actually pro-unionists, but realize that it only takes a small fraction of the population to actually force a secession start a coup, which is why Mir finds that conflict is inevitable. They never engage with the war, and even more so what Mahur actually finds is that globalization inevitably leads to splintering. What we're talking about in Crossfire is that in the short term, there are not the capabilities to actually secede, but in the long term, it is inevitable, which means that if we're going to be looking to the long term trend, which is all that matters because it is structural, it is inevitable. You're always going to be voting for the affirmative on this argument because it is it is like try or die for us. A legal secession is always better than an illegal secession. They really don't interact with this. Let's go to their second contention. Ishan pretty much extends through Ng just because Jackson said in summary, extend the Bentacor and Faru Fox analysis which says that EU breakup is inevitable and we are a risk of solvency. You don't have to evaluate this as offense, but it is de a terminal defense on their side and try or die for us. You simply can't grant them benefits off of the economy uh, deteriorating. Only we risk saving that. Then, let's go to our argument specifically on the ports. We review excellent evidence from SNL which indicates that the ports would be developed if Catalonia became independent. The reason why they're not being developed now is A, due to the Catalonian crisis. Devesh reads that analysis in his rebuttal and Jack turns it because when you affirm the resolution, you lift the Catalonian crisis and let them invest in ports. And second, we actually change how the infrastructure distribution is handled. Catalonia can now spend more of their infrastructure, uh, more, more of their money on infrastructure. That's gonna be important. They would do this specifically in ports because they have to expand their trade. The impact is clear. Because these are dual-use ports, they have no disincentive to letting NATO put the ships in the ports. This actually lets a U.S. pivot to the South China Sea, which is important because we prevent appeasement in the South China Sea, which impacts to thermonuclear, uh, the thermonuclear war. That's a Kolaki evidence. So we're going to be outlining their case specifically on magnitude because we outline that the deficit in the South China Sea, in the status quo, is why miscalculation and tensions are likely. But you vote for us. You saw back for this deficit. You saw back for this lopsided miscalculation outlining their case. If there's a thermonuclear war, Work, you literally cannot enjoy any of the benefits they talk about, and that's why we are proud to affirm. Thank you.
we're going to take this one slow. It's going to start on some stuff about inevitability. Then it's going to go compromise, our contention to, and ports. Everyone ready? Okay. So two things were established as inevitable in his last speech. The first is that sometime in the long-term future, everybody is going to secede. And the second is that sometime in the long-term future, the EU is going to collapse. They don't extend an independent reason why a legal secession is better than an illegal one, which means 50 years from now, the status of the ports is probably going to be either yes either way or no either way. There is no unique offense for either side in the long term, so let's talk about the short term, because if we don't have these ports in the short term, then there's going to be a thermonuclear war, which according to them is pretty freaking bad. So let's talk about the first reason we link in, which is tax autonomy. The logic on our turn to warrant one is the first reason you can vote for this. Because we say that if secession is inevitable everywhere, then also states wanting to compromise is inevitable everywhere, because states by definition want to stay together. That's a, a, the A point, but the B point is what's happening in Catalonia right now. You can extend the Guardian saying the tax commission is in action right now, the Hill saying that two of the three pro-independence parties, 62 of 70 seats, are anti-independence and pro-compromise. The one that holds eight seats was actually cut down by two-thirds in size, and all the anti-independence parties are also for compromise, and the ING card saying there's an 85% probability of peaceful de-escalation all they say is that a small fraction of radicals can do this? No, they can't. You need a majority vote in parliament to secede. Otherwise, how are you going to do that? At that point, tax autonomy solves because their link is that they are preventing them from investing in the infrastructure, but they invest in some of their infrastructure and Spain invests in the rest of it. But if you give them autonomy, they can invest in more of it. Prefer this on probability because if you vote for us, you are guaranteed that they can invest in this infrastructure really fast. But if you vote for them, there is economic uncertainty and there is some probability that investors leave the region that they can invest really quickly and the thermonuclear war gets triggered. Second way you can vote is on contention two. They only extend that econ collapse is inevitable in the long term, but in the short term, you can extend our warrant. Williams says that they want to keep them out because they want to set a precedent. That's key. We see they lose 70% of their foreign direct investment, 66% of their trade, and they don't have a central bank. They're paying off debt at the same time. They're not going to have time or the resources to invest in this infrastructure. You are delaying this infrastructure so people die because of a thermonuclear war. And finally, on their ports argument itself, again, their only link is that they're going to have more money. A, we link in, and B, there is only a risk that they lose money in the world where they secede. Like, every economist will tell you that there's only a risk that they lose money if they secede. And the internal link has always been money. So vote comment.